So I get asked all the time when it comes to the Sony APS-C system, what is the best lens that you could buy? And that's that's a pretty hard question, right? Because everybody's needs are different. But if you're looking for one lens that can probably do about anything that you need, uh, I think I think it's this. So this is the Tamron 17 to 70. It's a lens designed for APS-C cameras, so it's not going to cover full frame cameras. It has a uh, a zoom range from 17 millimeters to 70 millimeters, which is the full frame equivalent of about 25 to 105, which is a huge zoom range. It's an f 2.8 and it has image stabilization, which I haven't seen any other lens that offers that many features, especially at this price point for the Sony APS-C system. So for me, this is one of my top recommendations for anybody looking to get one lens that can just kind of do it all for your Sony APS-C system. And I think it is a fantastic pairing with the Sony ZV-E10. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hang on, that, that, that lens is the same price as the Sony ZV-E10 itself. And yeah, it totally is. And, and that's okay. I think it's far more valuable to invest in good glass to go with your camera than it is to invest in a really high quality camera with really bad glass. So if you've bought a camera or you're looking at buying a camera, make sure that you leave a good budget for better glass because that's going to make far more difference to your image quality than just the camera body itself. Now let's address the F1 in the room. This is a relatively large lens for, for an APS-C lens. I understand that Sigma make an 18 to 55 lens, um, which is, you know, a similar focal length without image stabilization. And it is probably well, at least half the size of this lens. I don't have that lens to test. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know. I can see if I could rent it and try it out. But I went with this one whenever I was doing all my research to figure out what kind of lens I wanted to buy. I went with this one because of the focal length, right? You've got 17 to 70 instead of 18 to 55 um, and the image stabilization. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the sort of digital stabilization in the Sony ZV-10. It's not bad. Um, I just prefer to not have to use it if, if possible. So having stabilization in the lens just makes a massive, massive difference. Now, I understand that people seem to think that this is a really large lens, but honestly, if you're if you're used to full frame lenses, this really is not that big for a 24 for a 25 to 105 f 2.8 stabilized lens. This is really not large at all. For example, this is a, a Zeiss 35 millimeter f 1.4. This is just a prime lens, doesn't zoom, no Im image stabilization, and it's it's the same size. Actually, it's a lot heavier, but it's about the same size um, as the 25 to 105 or the 17 to 70, um, which is very, very impressive. So I understand that it's larger than what most people think uh, when it comes to APS-C lenses. But if you were to compare it to full frame glass, this is nothing. You know, this really isn't bad. It sits really nicely on the camera. It does telescope. So whenever you zoom in or out, it does increase the size even more. But to me, lens size really is not that much of an issue. I really don't mind having a, a larger lens on my camera if it accomplishes what I need it to accomplish. And I think the amount of features and the quality that this can produce, you know, the incredible zoom range, the image stabilization, uh, all at an f2.8, I think the trade-off of the larger size is more than worth it. So yes, I know that the lens is large, you know, especially on the ZV-E10, it does, it is quite large. I think, especially if you were to stick it on something a little larger, like the Sony FX30, um, which is a heavier, bulkier camera, I think this is a fantastic pairing. I think it sits really well on the camera. I understand that if you think that it, it's too big for this camera, I get that, I would disagree, I think it's fine. But I think especially if you have one of the larger cameras, this is just perfect. And I have a video coming out next week talking about this, the Weeble 3S. And this small, easy, lightweight gimbal balances this setup, no problem. So if you want to see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button because that's going to be coming out next week. So just for, for the record, everything that you're going to be seeing on the screen, all the sort of sample footage uh, or photos that we've taken are all using this lens, but across different cameras. Sometimes I've used it on the Sony ZV-10, uh, a lot of the, most of the photos were on this, the A6700, and I've used it on my FX30. And that's one of the things that I love about this lens is if you have picked up a Sony ZV-E10, a cheap camera just to get you started, and you buy this lens, as you upgrade your camera body, this lens can go with you. This is a fantastic pairing with anything from a ZV-E10 to an FX30. Um, and, and I think that's one of the benefits to buying good glass is as you upgrade your camera body, you already have really good lenses to go with it. Now, personally, I'm, I'm more of a prime guy. I much prefer prime lenses over zoom lenses. This is the first lens that I've used that might be changing my mind on this. Um, again, mainly we've got 2.8, so we do have relatively good depth of field. Um, on a full frame, it's more like an f3.5, but when you zoom into 70 millimeters, which is a 105 millimeter, the compression in the background is great. Um, 
you know, but the, the, and the amount of light transmission, right, the brightness that you get to your sensor is the same as an f2.8 for full frame, you know, the, we're not losing any light here. So, you know, it's relatively good in low light and uh, the zoom range is fantastic. So, for example, recently I was traveling uh, over in North Carolina. I really didn't know what I was going to be filming and um, we were going to be setting up a YouTube studio for a friend of mine. Uh, video about that coming out later, so I'm really excited about that. But we didn't know what focal length he needed. So this lens was super helpful in helping us pick a focal length. You know, we were able to see, do we want it wide at a 17 mil? Do we want it really zoomed in at a 70 mil? And we landed at around 30. So that was really helpful because now whenever he's looking at getting the right lens for his camera, he knows a 30 millimeter is probably going to be the way to go. That saved him the hassle of buying a couple of different lenses and hoping that he would choose the right one. This way we were able to you know, use one lens to figure out the right focal length. And, and that's really important, especially if you're filming weddings or if you're doing anything that's more run and gun and, you know, you don't have a whole lot of time to prep, you aren't able to go to the, the site beforehand and see what you need. Having a zoom lens, especially one of this, this far of a zoom, right? 17 to 70 or 25 to 105 equivalent is incredibly beneficial because you basically have every focal length that you could possibly need. And again, for weddings, it really saves you time swapping lenses. Again, I, I really love primes. If I can get away with using primes for everything, I will because I prefer the shallow depth of field and I prefer the sharpness that I get from a prime. But the zoom lens gives you just the most versatility. Sometimes when you're shooting a wedding or if you're doing any sort of really important uh, sort of documentary work and you need to be fast, you need to be able to you know, go from a 35 millimeter to 70 millimeter, just like that, without having to take your lens off, grab another one, put it on, swap lens caps, all that kind of stuff. This is just so much faster. So for versatility, you cannot beat a zoom lens. So again, just, just, to, just to clarify, like I love this lens way more than I possibly imagined. It really was like a whole lot better than I thought. I got it because I was like, I really do just need a zoom. And um, you know, whenever I, I've changed camera systems like 50 times, I, I basically didn't own a zoom lens for the Sony system. I had the 28 to 75 by Tamron, but I ended up selling it just because I I never used it. And I kind of regret selling it because now it's like, you know what, sometimes it's just useful to have. I don't use them all the time, but whenever I need them, I really need them. So this just ticks all the boxes. But I want to know what you think. Do you think that this sort of lens is useful? Do you like zoom lenses or are you a prime lens type of person? Um, do you think that the size of this lens is a deal breaker or do you prefer uh, to have the image stabilization that this offers? But I want to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think of a lens like this? Is this fantastic to you? Does this tick all the boxes or is it a bit of a pain, too large or just not what you kind of want? Let me know in the comments down below and if you've enjoyed the video, do hit the like button. It really helps and maybe even subscribe as we continue to build this channel. I appreciate all of you for doing so and I hope that you have a wonderful day.